Welcome to Rainbow Backyard. I'm going to show you how I build this 4x8 chicken coop. This is part one of it, and I will put a link in the description when I upload the second part. If you would like to get a notification when I upload the second part, please consider subscribing and hit that bell. Our city only allows four chickens per household. If you have a small backyard, this is for you. I started building a chicken coop by building the foundation of it. I purchased 12 bricks. They serve two purposes. One, it will prevent the water from accumulating at the bottom, which will rot the lumber. Second, it will make me a little easier to level the ground. I know some of you may ask, why not just put some sand at the bottom? That would be much easier for me to level the ground. I don't want to put any sand here, just in case I need to move my chicken coop. I can reuse this location to grow some food or put grass seed back to it. I chose this place to build my chicken coop for three reasons. One, they will have the shade. This place is to the north of my house, so they won't get direct sunlight in the summer and they can stay cool. You can choose any location that has shade, like under a big tree, to build your chicken coop. The second reason will be my backyard is a slope and this place is kind of the flat part of it, so that will be easier for me. The third reason would also be the shade. As you can see, this was my vegetable garden. I tried watermelons, tomatoes, and asparagus. They're not doing good here because they don't have much sunlight. Also, the water does not stay here because it's on top of the slope. So I think they will be good if I can reuse this place and build my chicken coop. I started my first brick by getting rid of the weeds first. This process is kind of tedious because I just keep repeating until it's level. I would say the first brick took me almost an hour. And after the first brick is level, I just keep going. It took me about one hour per day on weekdays and a Saturday morning to get everything leveled up. I wouldn't say each break was perfectly leveled, but it's good enough. To make sure for each break, it's not only leveled by itself, but it's on the same level with other bricks. I use this little short lumber as a bridge between them so that I can measure if both of them are leveled together. In this case, it's pretty good. Today, I moved my miter saw out of my basement so that I can cut the lumbers outside. This is because I'm cutting pressure treated lumber today and they have many harmful chemicals in it. I don't want their dust to be in my basement at all. For the lumbers I use in this project, except one 4x4, I have all the other lumbers I used in this project are 2x4s. I use pressure treated lumber for my foundations. In total, there are three 8 feet 2x4s and one 8 feet 4x4s. Since they're at ground level, there's more chance they will be in contact with water and this will help them from being rot and the bricks will help as well. You might notice this 4 feet lumber is a little warped. It's okay because I found them in the car lumber cart at Home Depot. If you don't know this already, Home Depot pick through lumbers when they get them and find those lumbers that maybe work a little bit or have crack in them and throw them into the curl lumber cart. For anything you find in the curl lumber cart, you get 70% discount. It is huge and awesome. If you don't need them for your fine furniture or if you don't need a full 8 feet length, go for it. You can just get rid of the bad part and use most of it. I put pocky hole on the two 4 feet lumbers. For the joints in this project, I used a lot of pocky holes, but no glues at all. I didn't want to glue them in case I'm moving this chicken coop. In that case, I can take them apart, put lumbers in my car, and reassemble them easily. I put my two feet 4x4 pressure treated lumber at their proper positions. I mark where I'm going to cut it on this lumber so that I'm less likely to cut it wrong. For all four of them, I mark it properly on both ends. When I was doing this process, I was super mad at myself that I didn't get a sliding compound miter saw at the first place. 
otherwise it will make this step much more easier. After cutting it from one side, I turn it over and cut it from the other side so that it's relatively flat before I use the chisel. It's kind of a pain that I have to use a chisel to make it flat and it's super hard since there's no reference where it's flat. However, if you are like me that you only have limited tools, you can still do this. You don't have to have a table saw or a track saw. You can still use your miter saw. It's just a little bit more effort to it. As you can see, this time it's much easier to do it on a track saw. I use a 4x4 lumber to hold the other end of my track and just cut it and it's flat. You can also use a sander to make it flat, but I think chisel is good enough. For this two feet 4x4 lumber, both ends are different. One end I just need to cut it once, but the other end I need to cut it twice to make it be able to hold two lumbers. Then I used pocket screw to join the four sides. I used the blue coat screw here so that it can be exposed to water in all side elements. After I screwed four sides together, I used a tape measure to make sure it is equal. To know if it's equal, you just measure the corner and make sure they have the same measurement. Then I put the four 4x4 lumbers at their correct position. Then I also swept them to make sure I'm picking the best one for each corner. Then put the lumber on all four sides to make sure they're all level. And they turns out to be fine. I also use a tip measure to measure the actual size of the lumber that should sit on them so that it is accurate. I stack two 2x4 two lumbers together and cut them so that they have the same length. Then I use the pocket hole jack to drill two pocket holes on the 4x4 lumbers. I only drilled two pocket holes on one side, not the others, because I was afraid the screws will interfere with other screws that I already have. Then I used screws to attach the leg to the foundation and repeat it for four of the legs. I then assembled three sides on the ground and put it back to my foundation. I used pocket screw to screw them and later on put the last screw in to attach them to the legs. I then put three crossbars in the middle and using my chicken coop base as my table and assembled my side. During assembling, I noticed that it's not super flat so I used my chisel to flatten it and put my side on. To better support my chicken coop floor, I used a scrap piece of wood and attached them to the side using screws. Then I cut the OSB to 4 feet by 4 feet so that it can be the floor support of my chicken coop. It's a little bit hard to put this floor on the chicken coop by myself, but I was able to manage it. If you have two people, that would be better. The size I cut turns out to be perfect. I call this floor support because it's not a floor I'm going to use directly. I'm going to put polyethylene on it. The polyethylene sheet is basically a big plastic cutting board. It's FDA approved food grade safe. This chicken coop will look fantastic at the end. It will incorporate deep litter system, it will make it much easier to clean, and you only need to clean it once every one or two years. It will also have a ton of ventilations. You can open the very big door and scoop everything out to clean the coop. I will put a pause on part one of this chicken coop. If you are super excited about this coop and are looking forward to see part two, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. This is the very first video I upload on my YouTube channel Rainbow Backyard. If you like it, please hit the like button. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comment box below. Let me know if you are interested in this chicken coop and want a plan. I can make one and link it in the description.